Good afternoon. Woo. Welcome to day five of the 2023 Toronto International Film Festival. My name is Anita Lee and I'm the Chief of Programming here at TIFF. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome you to, to, to today's special event in conversation with Lee Byung-hyun and Park Se-jun. Yes. As you join us today, we encourage you to reflect on the land you are on and its history. We are located on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee. The territory is within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant and is home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We are very grateful to work on this land. We would like to thank our members, donors, and supporters for championing TIFF's mission to transform the way we see the world through film. For more details, visit TIFF.net. A sincere thank you to our lead sponsor, Bell, and our major sponsors, RBC, Bulgari, and Visa, for their continued support. And to our major supporters, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto, for their continued support as well. The In Conversation With series at TIFF is proudly presented by Visa. Other guests of the series still to come include Sylvester Stallone on Friday, September 15th, and Andy Lau, Saturday, September 16th. I would like to also extend a very warm welcome to the audiences from around the world who are joining us online to watch this event on the TIFF YouTube channel. So today we are honored to have two of the biggest and most exciting names in Korean film and television in attendance. Lee Byung-hyun has played many of the most iconic roles in Korean cinema with leading roles in classics such as Joint Security Area and I Saw the Devil. Byung-hyun has also worked on some of the most globally recognized Korean television series including Mr. Sunshine and Squid Game. For his work in promoting and elevating Korean cinema worldwide, he has received international acclaim and, is, and has taken home four Daesung Awards. Park Se-jun is one of the fastest rising stars in the Korean film scene, starring in the blockbusters Midnight Runners and Parasite. Se-jun's leading role in popular television series, such as Itaewon Class and What's Wrong with Secretary Kim, have garnered him a global fandom. From heart-wrenching dramas to action, Sejon can do it all. For his work in television, he has won three KBS Drama Awards and an upcoming role in a new Marvel film. Both actors are here today to discuss their storied careers as well as their role in the disaster epic Concrete Utopia, which just was confirmed as the Korean submission for the Academy Awards this year. Yes, please welcome Lee Byung-hyung and Park Se-jun. We will have translation today, so there just may be a tiny bit of a lag. Okay, so right away, uh, congratulations on the critical and commercial success of Concrete Utopia in Korea. Your film surpassed two million viewers in its first seven days of release. And as I said, selected as the Korean submission for the Academy Award for Best International Feature. Why do you think that this film has resonated so strongly with Korean audiences? And I'll ask that of Lee first and then Park. 정말 오랜만에... 일단 너무 반갑습니다. 어, 어, 한국에서 뭐 어떤 나라도 마찬가지겠지만 항상 들그 영화의 시류라는 게 있어요. 액션 영화가 유행을 하기 시작하면 몇 년을 계속 액션 영화만 하고 또 이런 저런 것들이 있는데 정말 오래간만에 보는 그 블랙 코미디 장르여서 어, 관객들에게 특히나 젊은 관객들에게는 굉장히 새롭게 다가온 부분도 있는 것 같아요. So as with any country, um, when there's like a trending cinema, 
um, you end up like, for example, an action film, the um, you'll keep making action films. So I think it's been a long time that a yeah, black comedy um, has been made of this um, distinction. So I think that's why it's been popular. Yes, and we noticed uh, the black comedy went over very well with our audiences at the world premiere. Can I ask the same question to you, Park? Uh, I have a similar공감하기에 충분한 이런 캐릭터들이 많이 있기 때문에 또 가능했다라는 덧붙여 얘기하자면 어 그런 어 많은 인물들이 있기 때문에 또 여러 가지의 내 상황과 빗대어서 생각해 볼수 있는 것들이 워낙 많다고 생각이 들기 때문에 또 그런 이유가 있지 않을까 싶습니다. I actually agree with Lee. I think there are similar I agree. I have similar ideas. Um, I believe that there are relatable characters that makes you see it from your own perspective, and that's possibly that's probably why. Okay, thank you. We're gonna uh, go back a, a little bit in time and ask when you both started in the industry, uh, Byunghyun, what was the industry like when you started out in the 1990s, and how did you enter the industry? <laughs> It's been so long, I can't remember. Uh, it was a joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 사실 그 당시에는 한류라는 거는 뭐 생각지도 못하는 부분이었고 어, 어, 헐리우드 영화를 우리나라의 어, 뭐 감독이나 배우가 어, 함께 하게 된다라는 것도 어, 굉장히 큰 판타지였던 그런 시절이었어요. 어, 촬영의 환경도 다르고 어, 여러 가지로 너무나 다른 그런 상황 속에서 시작을 했고 어, 사실 굉장히 긴 시간 동안 그 변화의 모습들을 보면서 사실 지금까지 와서 지금의 한국 컨텐츠나 어, 한국 배우들 감독들이 진출하는 헐리우드에 진출하고 하는 거 보면 어떤 경우에는 현실감이 안 생기기도 해요. So at the time, there was not even the idea of like a Korean wave, Hanyu, and the concept of working in Hollywood almost felt like a fantasy. Um, so seeing all the changes throughout the year, like seeing all the directors and actors going out into the Hollywood working, it almost still feels unrealistic, like, un like, un like not really reality. Yes, it is really uh, incredible, I think, just seeing the rise of the popularity of Korean film and television around the world. Um, Sejun, for you as well, uh, what was it like for you in the mid-2010s uh, when you started, and how did your career actually start? I don't remember this <laughs> time. 제, 제가 데뷔했을 때도 그때까지도 사실 이 정도로 해외에 막 반응이 있거나 어, 어떤 리액션이 있지는 않았었던 것 같아요. 근데 이제 갑자기 어, 어떤 급변하는 시기가 있었던 것 같고 아마 그게 코비드 이후로 많이 바뀌었다고 좀 많이 느끼는 편인데 어 그때와 달라지지 않은 거는 어 한국에서 꾸준히 계속 좋은 작품은 작업을 계속 하고 있었다라는 것들은 어 같은 면인 것 같은데 어 여러 가지 플랫폼의 덕을 좀 많이 본것 같다라는 생각이 들어요. Uh, it hasn't been that long since I debuted, but for some reason I can't remember very well. Uh, when I first de debuted, the international recognition for Korean cinema and Korean media wasn't as big. There, suddenly, there was a sudden change at a certain point. Maybe the pandemic had to do with it. Um, but what didn't change is that good Korean projects are still in the works then and now. Um, perhaps the platforms, such as streaming platforms, might be uh, related to it. Thank you. Uh, Pyonghyun, your first leading role in a feature film was in Joint Security Area in 2000. 
a political thriller surrounding a shooting on the North, on the North and South Korean border, written and directed by Park Chan-wook. JSA was the highest grossing Korean film ever made at the time, as well as Korean cinema's first major international crossover hit. From your perspective, how would you describe the impact of JSA, both on Korean cinema and on Korean audiences? 일단 그 영화가 이제 초, 저의 첫 장편 영화는 아니었고요. 다섯 번째였었어요. 그 전에 네 편이 다 쫄딱 망해가지고 아마 기억을 못 하시는 것 같아요. First, first leading role. <웃음> 아, 아, 그 전에도 다 주연이었습니다. <웃음> That was actually my fifth movie role. Um, I made four movies previously, but um, they did not make an impact. <웃음> 아 uh, 아무튼 음, 아 사실 그 시절부터가 영화의 영화를 숫자로 어, 평가하는 그런 시절이 시작이 됐던 것 같아요. 우리가 처음 영화를 제가 그 전에 네 편을 했다고 했는데 그때 영화를 했을 때는 몇 명이 들어왔다, 혹은 이 영화가 얼마를 벌었다에 대한 것이 크게 부각되기보다는 이 영화는 어떤 영화였고 뭐가 참 좋았다라는 얘기를 더 많이 하던 시절이었어요. 근데 JSA 바로 직전부터 언젠가 영화, 영화가 숫자로 평가가 되는 그런 시대가 펼쳐지기 시작해서 지금은 너무나 자연스럽게 됐지만 사실 저는 처음에는 약간 거부감을 좀 느꼈어요. 그렇게 영화가 숫자로만 평가가 된다는 것이. At the time, um, at the time it was like it was just more usual to um, rate the movie and talk about the film critically but as right before the JSA came out um, there was a trend that started basically where you started to count care about the box office um, at first I was kind of very resistant to the idea that the film is just being judged upon how it does at the box office 그런 것들이 어쩌면 음그 장르의 다양성이나 혹은 어, 상업 영화 그리고 작품을 어, 어, 작품성 있는 영화 이런 여러 가지 에, 다양한 것들에 대한 시도를 조금은 어, 안 하게 되는 그런 어떤 어, 지점이 있다라는 생각은 좀 들어요. 그래서 그런 부분들은 좀 단점이 아닌가라는 이건 뭐 갑자기 얘기가 다른 쪽으로 흐지만 어, 개인적으로는 그렇게 생각을 했습니다. And also, I think that there was like a more experiential um, where, you're, where you where try to explore different diverse genres, and that's also commercial appealing. And I think that was one of the benefits of the success. Okay, well, we are going to watch some clips, uh, JSA being one of them. So we will show two clips from Lee Byung Hun's films. In our first clip, Joint Security Area. Your character, the South Korean Sergeant Lee, has been separated from his comrades and stranded on the North Korean side of the border. In the second clip from I Saw the Devil, your character, Soo Hyun, has tracked down the man who has killed his wife. In this particular sequence, Soo Young and the serial killer, Kang Chul, have a cold-blooded brawl in a greenhouse. Let's roll the clips.
Beyonce was directed by Park Chan-wook, director, of course, of Old Boy, Decision to Leave, and co-starred Song Gang-ho of Parasite and Memories of Mur Murder. Uh, it's now over 20 years later. All three of you continue to be influential pioneers in the Korean film scene, Korean and, fi and, Korean and film television scene. Um, as a young actor, uh, was there something you learned or discovered working together with these artists at that time? Yeah,는,심,제가,미척,경험해보진,못한,감정,들,이,대본,상,에,훨씬,더,많,이,보여,요,그런,감,정,들,을,이,해,하는,데,굉,장,히,큰,도,움,이,되는,거,죠,감,
어, 예전에 촬영을 하는데 어떤 한 씬을 찍는데 어, 그 씬을 거의 다 찍었어요. 근데 몇십 커트를 다 카메라를 이동하면서 찍고 하다가 한 카트가 남았는데 그한 카트를 다 준비가 돼서 이제 한 30초만 연기하면 끝나는 거였는데 조 감독이 갑자기 중앙에 딱 서더니 Time's up! 아, 뭐. 그러는 거예요. 그래서 그냥 다 거기서 끝나고 집으로 갔어요. 그거 몇 초만 찍으면 되는데 그 장면은 저한테 굉장히 잊을 수가 없는 어, 충격적인 장면이었어요. There was one scene where we're almost done and we had only one cut left, about 30 seconds left to go in the scene and then all of a sudden the assistant director stood up and said Time's up and then we were supposed to go home. So to me, that was a great shock that we had to wrap it up for the day with 30 seconds left. 그게 굉장히 충격적인 일이었는데 예전에 지금 한국도 거의 그렇게 이제 어, 거의 다 변해가고 있어요. And at the time, while it was a great shock, I've noticed that um, it's starting to become familiar in Korean productions as well. There's definitely pros and cons of uh, a more uh, organized and stricter production set. Having been a producer myself, I also understand when you cut and need to wrap up and send everybody home. Uh, we're going to turn uh, some questions now to Park Sejun and some of the feature films that he has worked on. Um, you have had the chance to work with some of the most promising young filmmakers in Korea. Such as Kim Ju Han on Midnight Runners and Lee Byung Hyun on Dream. How do you see this new generation of filmmakers carrying the torch forward? And what excites you the most to be part of this? Um, 일단, um, 저도, uh, 선배님, 작품을 보면서 어, 연기 배우로 배우의 꿈을 어, 키워 왔었고 어, 이제 배우가 돼서 어, 여러 작품을 하면서 어, 여러 감독님들을 만나게 됐는데요. 아무래도 이제 선배님 세대 감독님들이시다 보니까 어, 이제 저에 대한 정보도 많이 없으셨고 그래서 어 이렇게 함께 할수 있는 순간이 아직까지 많이 없었던 것 같은데 First of all, I also dreamed of acting while watching Lee Byung Hun and after doing a few films and I I've, I've been meeting many industry professionals but we did not really have a lot of time to work together. 어 비교적 그 말씀하신 이 김주환 감독님이나 어 감독 이병헌님이나 어 저랑 이제 나이 차이가 그렇게 많이 나지 않는 연배 감독님들이시다 보니까 어 저랑 되게 비슷한 시기에 만난 것 같더라고요. 저도 영화를 이제 막 시작하는 배우의 입장이고 그 감독님들도 이제 영화를 시작하는 어, 단계의 감독님들이어서 어, 그런 타이밍이 잘 맞았던 것 같고 어, 계속해서 뭔가 같은 세대를 함께 갈것 같은 그런 느낌도 있고 어, 뭔가 현장에서는 되게 친구 같은 느낌도 많이 들었고 음, 앞으로 오래오래 볼것 같다라는 생각이 많이 들었던 것 같아요. Like you mentioned, directors Kim Juan and Byung Han, they're almost the same age and we started working almost at the same time as well. And so I would say that timing was good and we will likely work together continuously, closely. Um, on set, we're almost like friends and I believe we will work together for a long time. Okay, wonderful. So we will watch a couple of clips. We will take a look at two clips now in Midnight Runners. Park Sejun plays Ki Jun, a young cadet in the police academy. Alongside his best friend, Ki Yo, Ki Jun investigates the abduction of a young woman. In this clip, the two find her old workplace, an illegal ear cleaning salon, and <laughs> yes, an ear cleaning salon, and decide to investigate. The second is from Parasite. Ki Woo, the son of the impoverished Kim family, chats with his old college buddy, Min Hyuk, 
played by Park si Jung. What seems like an innocent offer on Min Hyuk's part to fill in for him as an English tutor for a few weeks will change the lives of the Kim family forever. Let's take a look. Knowing that this scene sets the main plot of Parasite into motion, and that this film went on to become the most recognized Korean film of all time, and the first foreign language film to win Best Picture at the Academy Awards. Were you surprised that the film had such significant international impact? And how do you feel seeing this now? 일단 영상을 본 소감은 너무 부끄러워서 지금 땀이 계속 나고 있고요. <웃음> the moment I watched it, I got so embarrassed that I started sweating. <웃음> 어 지금 보니까 왜 저렇게 연기를 했을까라는 생각이 계속 스치고 있습니다. I'm questioning myself why did I act like that. 근데 사실 그 기생충 같은 경우는 제가 어떤 언급을 하기에는 너무 잠깐 이제 특별 출연을 한 거라서 뭐라고 말씀드려야 할지 좀 조심스러운데 음 출연 계기는 지금 함께 호흡을 한 우식이가 어, 추천을 했기 때문에 또 출연을 하게 됐었던 것 같고 어, 되게 봉준호 감독님과 어, 작업을 해본다는 것만으로도 굉장히 설레는 일이었었던 것 같아요. 
As for Parasite, my appearance was very short, so I'm careful to say a lot or say much. The reason why I got involved in this project was actually because of Choi who also appears in the scene that you just saw. It was thanks to his recommendation. But just getting to work with director Bong gave me butterflies. 어 그리고 저는 촬영 장면이 몇 장면 없었지만 어다 찍고 나서 나중에 이 영화가 공개됐을 때어 물론 스크립트는 봤었지만 영상으로 구현되는 건 처음 보는 거였기 때문에 굉장히 놀라웠고 어그 이후에 어 계속 이전 세계 영화 팬들이 이 영화를 되게 어 음, 좋게 봐주시는 거에 대해서도 굉장히 놀라웠고 어, 이 영화에 참여한 일원으로서 굉장히 어, 뜻깊다라는 생각이 많이 들었던 것 같습니다. Um, I'm not in a lot of scenes, but when it was released, actually, I read the script, but it was my first time seeing it on the screen, and I was really wowed by it. Um, international fans and audiences took very positive reaction towards the film, and um, that was very meaningful. Yes, I, I recall uh, when Parasite opened here at TIFF, uh, the audience reaction was so incredible and we knew immediately that it was going to be a very, very uh, successful and uh, impactful film. Um, you mentioned uh, you were really um, excited to work with uh, Bong Joon-ho and one of your reasons for uh, taking that role on Parasite. Uh, you're really known for wor your work where you have taken on very diverse roles. More recently, you were also in Dream, which was a comedy where you play uh, a soccer player uh, in a uh, very uh, comedic uh, situation. It's very popular now on Netflix. Can you talk a little bit about what draws you to projects and how do you cho choose your roles? Mm. 어 아무래도 처음에는 이 스크립트가 재밌냐 아니냐가 중요한 것 같아요. 음, 근데 이제 저의 TMI를 하나 알려드리자면 제가 난독증이라고 해서 글이 잘안 안 읽어지는 그런 증상이 좀 있어요. At first, I take into consideration how entertaining the script might be. And if I may share um, a TMI, which is like too much information, I have trouble reading sometimes. 그래서 이 스크립트가 제 머릿속에 상상이 안 되면 글이 읽혀지지가 않는 좀 그런 증상이 있거든요. So if I cannot imagine what's written in the script, then I'm, it's not possible for me to read it. 생각보다 심플합니다. 이게 제 머릿속에 그려지고 재미가 있으면 그 이후에 이제 캐릭터를 보게 돼요. 그래서 이 캐릭터를 내가 표현할 수 있을까? 뭐, 뭐 자신이 있다거나 아니면 이 캐릭터를 표현하는 게 굉장히 순간들이 재밌을 것 같다라는 생각이 들면은 이제 어, 함께 하게 되는 것 같아요. It's actually pretty simple. First I ask myself, can I dream it in my head? Then I can actually see the characters. Then I ask myself, can I play it? Am I confident about playing it? And will it be fun? Those are the questions that I ask. I think you've made some wonderful choices thus far. Um, we're going to pivot a little bit. Uh, and I want to ask both of you. Um, both of you started as ensemble cast members on K-dramas and then developed your careers to become major leading stars. Can each of you talk about your experience acting in K-dramas and if you've actually taken anything or learned anything from that experience into your later careers? Um, uh, 잠깐만, 예전에 한국에서 드라마 TV 시리즈를 찍을 때는 어, 저는 최대 3일까지도 밤을 새본 적이 있어요. 그래서 어, 심지어 액션 하는 순간 바로 대사를 하기 전에 잠이 들어 버린 적도 있었는데 어, 사실 굉장히 원시적인 방법이죠. 
I keep talking about my old um, day stories. Um, there was one time when I was um, shooting a Korean drama that I did not sleep for three days. That at one scene, um, when the director shouted action, I actually kind of fell asleep. Mm. 그리고 어, 작가들이 에, 과, 이 시청자들의 리액션을 보고 어, 다음 회의 이야기를 바꾸려고 일부러 대본을 다음 주에 나갈 대본을 아직 안 주고 기다리고 있다가 어, 촬영을 하는 동안에 우리가 촬영장에서 세팅을 조명 세팅을 다 하고 있는데 그때 대본이 오는 경우가 있어요. So writers are so in tune to what the audience feedback is like. So oftentimes, we would not even get the script before the shooting. So we would even just get handed the script on the day of the shooting as the changes were made. Uh, uh, um, um, I mean, it was a very wrong way to do the work, but I think the grueling training has made me into a better actor. And uh, for you, uh, Sejan, as well, what 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 experiences have you taken from your K-drama boot camp, it sounds like? Mm, 저도 근데 어, 딱 제가 데뷔할 때도 그 시절부터 시작을 했거든요. 그 매일 밤을 새야 하고 대본이 안 나와가지고 기다려야 되고 그런 시절을 저도 딱 데뷔할 때부터 그걸 느끼면서 현재까지 오게 됐는데요. I think I also started during a, during the same kind of time. At the time that I debuted, there was also a lack of sleep, and we were always waiting for scripts to be delivered as well. 그래서 한국에서는 이제 그 순간 순간에 뭔가 잘 넘어가는 능력을 이제 재치라고 표현을 하는데 그 재치가 강제로 생길 수밖에 없는 환경들이 있더라고요. Um, so it actually requires us a lot of wit and to work um, at every moment to come up with a, to, um, to work on, impo um, sorry. As I think I was forced in order to become more witty about shooting every scene. 그래서 음, 모든 상황을 다 어, 이렇게 자연스럽게 대처하는 능력이 좀 생기는 것 같아요. 근데 그런 것들이 어, 저의 이 촬영뿐만 아니라 살아가는 데 있어서도 굉장히 또 도움이 많이 된다라는 것을 느끼게 됐고 어 그로 인해서 책임감도 항상 많이 느끼게 되고 어이 작품을 음, 한 명의 배역을 맡은 배우로서 어 책임감 있게 잘 끝내야겠다라는 마음가짐을 항상 갖게 되는 것 같아요. So I think I got the power to naturally deal, deal with such incidents, but it also impacts my daily life in addition to my roles. I feel more responsible in that sense. And whenever I'm in given a role, I feel really responsible about the character. Um, I started watching a lot of K-dramas during COVID, and I'm so impressed by the uh, craft, uh, both on screen and off screen, of Korean TV series. So I see that uh, it's rigorous work for actors as well. I also want to uh, ask you, uh, along with um, the popularity of Korean television series, uh, both of you have also starred in series and films for streaming services, such as Mr. Sunshine and Itaewon Class. Has the growth of Netflix and other streaming services affected your career opportunities in Korea and abroad? The impact is very big. Back then, in Korea, there was a lot of drama that was produced in Korea, but now there is a lot of drama that is produced in Korea. 
그런 어, 그 플랫폼을 통해서 전 세계의 어, 어, 영화 팬들이나 혹은 어, TV 시리즈 팬들에게 보여준다는 것은 엄청난 어, 큰 변화를 저희에게 어, 그리고 영향을 주죠. Um, it's a great, um, it's giving a great influence. So before, dramas made in Korea were only seen by Korean audience, but now it's being watched by the international audience. Um, so I, I would say that's a huge change. 반면 어, 영화를 생각하자면 음, 영화에서는 사실을 저는 개인적으로 극장이라는 공간을 굉장히 좋아하는 사람이에요. 그러니까 영화만큼이나 극장을 좋아하는 사람인데 어, 이런 플랫폼으로 영화를 보는 것이 너무나 익숙해진 지금의 시대에 극장은 점점 관객 수가 줄어간다는 지점은 개인적으로는 굉장히 에, 안타까운 부분이긴 합니다. But for film, personally, I'm a huge fan of watching movies in theaters. So now that there's more people watching movies on streaming and TV screens, um, that's a bit of a disappointing um, aspect for me. Yes, the pros and cons. Uh, for uh, Park s e j o n for you, would you say that Netflix and other streaming services have really made a huge impact in terms of your career opportunities? 일단 이 자리에 있을 수 있는 것도 그 플랫폼의 영향이 있다라고 표현할 수 있을 것 같고요. I think what brought me here is also an influence of streaming services as well. 그런 플랫폼 덕분에 한국 작품들이 더욱 이렇게 한국 TV 시리즈들이 전 세계에 알려지면서 어 제작비 자체도 굉장히 또 높아지면서 훨씬 퀄리티가 높은 작품들을 만들어 나갈 수 있게 되더라고요. And thanks to these platforms, Korean uh, films and projects became more known to the world, and in turn, the production budget increased, and of course, there are higher quality quality as well. 그래서 제가 처음 시작할 때만 해도 드라마가 대부분 롱콤 위주가 많았었는데 지금은 어, 제작비 자체도 커지면서 음, 다양한 장르의 시리즈를 또할수 있다라는 상황들이 생기는 게 굉장히 신기했고 음, 덕분에 저는 배우로서 되게 좋은 시절을 또 살아가고 있구나라는 생각도 들게 됐었습니다. When I first started, um, most of the projects were romantic comedies. They were dominant, but with more money in the market, they were exploring more diverse genres now. And thanks to that, I feel like I'm exploring uh, more genres. Okay, thank you. We'll take a look at the two clips now. In this clip from the 23rd episode of Mr. Sunshine, Eugene Choi, the American officer, played by Lee Byung-hyun, is reunited with his love, Go e Shin, after three long years. <laughs> Who seems to be developing a crush and asks him why he has chosen to name his restaurant Damban, which translates to sweet night in English. Let's roll the clips.
Mr. Sunshine is an epic historical storytelling uh, with traditional K-drama elements, and it made it one of the highest rated shows in Korean cable television history. I am uh, evidence of how addictive it is. I decided that I should watch a few episodes recently because uh, I had seen it very long time ago. Before I knew it, I was on episode 12 at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to stop myself. Uh, you play a Korean-born American soldier who returns to uh, Korea and struggles between two cultural identities. What attracted you to this, to this character then? And how do you feel about this character now? Because in some ways, it reflects your uh, lived experience today. Chomegu. 한국에서 노비라는 그런 어떤 어, 신분으로 태어나서 어, 9살에 어, 도망가듯이 이제 미국으로 어, 미랑을 하게 되고 조선이라는 것을 어, 증오하고 어, 복수해야 하는 음, 그런 어떤 상대로 생각하면서 자랐다는 지점이 좀 굉장히 흥미롭게 다가왔던 것 같아요. So the character is a boy who is born a slave in Korea and escapes to America at an age nine. So he grows up with this betrayal in his heart and looking forward to revenge. So I kind of felt really um, found the character interesting to play. 그렇게 복수를 해 하고 싶은 대상인 대한민국 아, 조선의 어떤 여인을 알게 되는데. 그 여인은 그런 조선을 위해서 목숨을 바치며 싸우는 어, 그런 음, 사람이라는 게 굉장히 에, 아이러니하고 어, 음, 저한테 굉장히 흥, 흥미로 다가왔던 것 같아요. I found it very fun and ironic about how this character who is trying to enact revenge against this country meeting a woman who is fighting for the country of Korea. And now that you also live between LA and Seoul, uh, do you have a deeper understanding of what that uh, bicultural feeling or uh, experience is? Um, actually, in the current era, I've e x p e r i e n c e 여기 집이 있어서 뿐만 아니라 여행을 우리가 미국뿐만 아니라 여러 나라로 여행을 하고 왔다 갔다 하는 그런 것들이 정말 이전처럼 아주 엄청나게 어려운 일이 아니기 때문에 여러 가지 문화를 접할 수 있다는 지점에서는 저의 정서를 정서적인 부분에 굉장히 배우로서 큰 도움이 일단은 되고 근데 정작 미국에 올 시간은 그렇게 잘안 되는 것 같아요. 그래서 어, 그런 부분이 좀 아쉽긴 한데 어, 되도록이면 자주 왔다 갔다 할 생각이에요. 답이 이상하게 됐네. <웃음> Nowadays, experiencing different culture is pretty easy by travel. Um, but I think experiencing different cultures and going to different countries helped me immensely as an actor. Um, Honestly, I haven't been back to America as I'd much like to, but in the future, I would like to visit there more. 아무래도 어, 유진 초이라는 역할을 미스터 선샤인에서 했던 것이 제가 또그두 가지 문화를 어릴 적부터 이렇게 좀 어, 봐오면서 자란 것도 어느 정도는 그래도 그 정서를 이해하는데 좀 도움은 됐겠죠. So I, I. Was I found very similarly with the character of Eugene Choi experiencing two different cultures, as I also, when I was younger, had chance to experience two different cultures of U.S. and America, um, U.S. and Korea. Thank you. Uh, Itaewon class was a cultural phenomenon in 2020. Uh, also, a very, very addictive uh, television series that kept me up till 3 a.m. many nights. Uh, I did watch the full series. Um, along with the humor, uh, the show really uh, illustrates some very important themes such as class, inequality, and social acceptance in modern-day Korea. 
Sejin, for you, how close or different was your upbringing from your character? And what did you do to prepare to portray him so authentically? Uh, 일단 제가 캐나다에 와서 이태원 클래스를 볼줄 몰랐는데 이렇게 <웃음> 감회가 좀 남다른 것 같습니다. I didn't know I would be watching Itaewon class in Canada, so it really feels different. <웃음> 어, 그래서 지금 보면서 그때 생각이 좀 많이 나는데요. 어, 일단 그 박세로이라는 캐릭터의 가짐 그 마인드가 너무 좋았어요. I'm reminded of that time while watching the clip, and I, what I really liked is the mindset of Park Seo-hui. Uh, 우리는 살아가다 보면 어 누군가가 너안될 거야 안될 거다 이렇게 얘기를 하면 어 진짜 안될것 같은 생각이 들거든요. 근데 이 세로이라는 캐릭터는 항상 자기의 주관과 소신을 가지고 살아가요. 그래서 주변 사람들이 봤을 때안될것 같았는데. 이미 이렇게 돼 있어요. 그런 인물을 마주하다 보니까 어, 저 역시도 되게 긍정적인 생각이 계속 들고 아, 이렇게 소신 있게 살아야겠다라는 어, 인생의 공부를 좀 하게 된 캐릭터였던 것 같아요. When you're living, some people try to put you down and tell you some things are not going to work. Um, and it feels like it might come true that way. But with the Park se character, he has his own set of beliefs and he really sticks to them. And, uh, and in the end, he makes, he makes them come true. So through him, I also became quite positive and he gave me a life lesson in that sense. 게다가 이 캐릭터의 음, 이 성장, 성장물이라고 많이 표현을 하는데 이런 청춘의 성장을 표현하는 게 굉장히 저는 매력이 있다라고 많이 느끼거든요. 근데 이 캐릭터가 딱 그런 아주 적합한 또 캐릭터였던 것 같아서 어, 이 인물을 연기하면서 좀 인생에 대해서도 다시 생각해 보게 됐었던 것 같습니다. Um, this is what you call a coming of age story, and I think it's always very charming to show growth in film. And he's actually the perfect character to show it, and it made me think of life again as well. Is he uh, very different from you, or similar in any ways? Uh, 일단 지금 헤어스타일이 많이 다른 것 같고요. <웃음> First of all, I have a very different hairstyle now. 어 uh, 그리고 그때보다 조금 더 나이를 먹은 것 같고요. And I aged a, aged a tiny bit more than then. <웃음> 뭐 그런 걸 떠나서 음. 사실 저는 저제 성격이랑 굉장히 비슷하다고 생각했어요. And aside from that, I thought he had a pretty similar personality to me. 어, 그래서 음, 이 인물을 처음에 연기할 때 접근하는 것도 어렵지 않았었던 것 같고 어, 모든 순간이 행복했던 기억만 이, 있는 것 같습니다. That's why approaching the character was easy from the start and I was happy every moment that I played him. It's a very memorable character, and it was a very popular series, so please uh, take a look if you haven't. And now it brings us to Concrete Utopia, the film that is a world premiere here at TIFF. And let's take a look first at the trailer.
I'll just uh, c correct that, of course, the film had its theatrical release this summer in Korea, and the film will be playing again uh, Friday, September 15th. What day is today? Oh, Monday. Okay, yes. 8.30 on Saturday, September 16th are the upcoming screenings. Okay, so um, I'd like to ask the same question of both of you. You both play characters in Concrete Utopia who are much more layered and complex than they initially appear. Was there an aspect of your character or a scene that was particularly challenging and why? 일단 육체적으로는 이 영화의 배경은 어, 정말 혹독한 엄청 추운 겨울인데 저걸 한 여름에 찍었어요. 그래서 정말 엄청 습하고 더운 그런 가장 더운 시절에 저런 패딩과 털옷을 입고 촬영을 매일 매일 해야 된다는 거가 일단은 육체적으로는 힘들었고 음, 정신적으로 힘들었던 건 아, 글쎄요. 그, 저는 굉장히 재밌게 촬영했어요. 그 캐릭터가 변해가는 과정이라든가 권력을 얻으면서 어, 사람이 어쩔 수 없이 미묘하게 변해가는 그런 어떤 모습들을 어, 그리는 것이 저는 좀 어렵다기보단 그 고민이 됐다기보단 재밌었던 것 같아요. So while the background of the movie is set in this harsh winter. The production took place in the summer, so wearing this really thick winter jacket physically was, physically was really, really hard. Um, mentally, I think I really had a great time shooting this film, like observing the change um, that happens to the character as it comes into power and authority. I had a really great time portraying that. Was there a scene that you enjoyed filming the most? Uh. 이 영화에서 굉장히 되게 중요한 어, 부분이기도 한데 어, 영탁이라는 제 캐릭터가 어, 아파트라는 노래를 부르는 그 시퀀스가 있어요. 그 시퀀스가 어, 저는 개인적으로 가장 마음에 들고 그 안에 굉장히 큰 반전이 있고 조금 어, 소름 끼치는 그런 어떤 어, 이야기가 담겨 있어요. 그래서 그 장면은 가장 어, 개인적으로 마음에 들어요. There's a very important scene where my character Young Tak um, sings a popular Korean song called Apartment. Um, in that scene, there's a great um, twist as well as a horrifying moment. That was my favorite scene to shoot. So it's a great singing and dancing number. Uh, yes. 뭐 항상 노래는 제가 항상 작품에서 다양하게 보여주고 있으니까. 어, 다음 영화에서는 어떤 또 춤이나 노래를 보여드릴까 요즘 고민을 좀 하고 있습니다. I always show off my um, singing and dancing skills um, in my films. Um, I'm thinking about how I should do it differently next time. And for you, uh, Park Sejun, what was a, a scene uh, that was perhaps the most challenging or most enjoyable for you? 저 역시도 더위가 가장 일단 힘들었고 음, 액션을 하기 전에 옷을 입고 3초 만에 땀이 나거든요. 근데 뭔가 이이땀 때문에 집중이 방해가 되면 안 되는데 생각보다 이게 많이 거슬리더라고요. 그래서 어, 그런 것들이 좀 익숙해져야 되는 상황에 일단 많이 힘들었던 것 같고요. The heat was also the most challenging part for me. Right before shooting, we would put the clothes on and we would just break into sweats in three seconds. Um, that's one of the reasons why I could have some difficulty with concentrating and getting used to that heat was one of the challenges. 제 그거 말고 연기적으로는 어, 항상 맡았던 역할들이 뭔가 어, 특이한 상황과 어떤 특이한 설정들이 어, 어느 정도는 다 있었던 것 같은데 이번 역할 민성이라는 역할 같은 경우는 좀 대한민국에 어떻게 보면 좀 평범하게 살아가는 사람 중에 있을 법한 
그런 인물을 표현해야 했었거든요. 그래서 그 평범함을 표현하는 게 어떻게 표현해야 될까가 가장 저한테는 중요한 부분이었던 것 같고요. 그리고 어, 이 인물이 어, 이 상황에 점점 맞춰가면서 조금씩 조금씩 변해가요. 근데 그런 변화하는 과정들을 표현하는 것도 음, 저도 뭐 어려운 부분보다는 어, 즐기, 제, 제가 이 연기를 하면서 즐길 수 있었던 부분이었던 것 같은데 어, 그 부분이 잘 표현돼야 하기 때문에 어려웠던 점이라고 말씀드릴 수 있을 것 같고요. 음, in terms of performances, I would say that I always received roles that had that were in unique situations and backgrounds. In terms of Min Sung, he's an average Joe. So showing how ordinary, what kind of ordinary person he is, that was really important to me. And he actually changes. as he adjusts to the situation around him. And showing that process was enjoyable, but also challenging. Um, it was hard because I thought it was very important. 그리고 또 어, 반대로 좋았던 거는 음, 솔직히 말씀드리면 다 좋았는데 <웃음> 어, 굳이 이제 저는 제, 이제 제 장면 중에 제가 나오는 컷들 중에 기억나는 좀 강하게 좀 기억나는 것이 저게 이제 문을 막 지금 티저에도 잠깐 나왔는데 이렇게 문을 막고 막그또 슬로우가 걸려 있어가지고 되게 막 얼굴도 막 이렇게 막 떨리고 이런 장면이 있는데 그 잠깐의 한 커트가 어 되게 많은 감정을 표현해주고 있는 것 같더라고요. 그래서 그 장면이 이 영화에서 저한테는 제 얼굴을 봤을 때 좀. 음 뭔가 하나 건졌다라고 느낄 정도로 좀 좋았던 어, 것 같습니다. And for both of you, um, I we need to translate. Oh, sorry. Um, as I know exactly. Um, so in my opinion, I actually like them. I liked all the scenes, to be honest, out of my scenes. But there's one in particular that really sticks. Um, it was actually shown in the teaser that you just saw. It was in slow motion, and it's of the of my face trembling. And it's a single cut, but it expresses so many different emotions. So I really thought it was a scene that was a, a good good scene of mine, in my opinion. Can you both also speak about uh, obviously the uh, symbolism of the apartment? in uh, Korean society, and dystopian uh, genre or often is a social critique. Um, in summary, what, what do you think, how do you feel uh, the film is, is reflecting Korean society and what is uh, perhaps the message of the film? Uh, 영화는 사실은 굉장히 극단적인 상황을 쥐어줬을 뿐 지금 현대를 현재를 살아가는 사람들의 이야기라고 저는 생각을 해요. 사실 지금의 인, 지금의 어떤 우리가 인간성을 만약에 논하자면 그런 것들을 집약적으로 어, 보여주는 것이 바로 이 영화에서 보여지는 그런 어떤 인간성에 대한 이야기가 아닐까라는 생각을. While the movie portrays a very extreme situation, I think that it really kind of reflects the current society about the humanity. Um, 영화에서 그런 대사가 있는데 세상이 다 무너지고 아파트 하나 남았는데 이 아파트에 살던 사람들 그리고 바깥에서 생존해서 이 아파트로 들어오기 위해서 몰려드는 생존자들. 어, 이 사람들은 이제 세상이 리셋됐다고 얘기해요. 세상이 리셋이 됐기 때문에 지금 현재 살인자나 뭐 목사님이나 지금 이제 다 모두가 평등한 시, 에, 상황이라고. There's a line in the film that describes how the world is destroyed but the apartment survived on its own. So there's the residents that's already living in the apartment and then there are the people that are trying to get inside the apartment and that there has been this great reset. Regardless of your job background, everybody is on the equal footing. 그래서 이 아파트에 원래 살던 사람들 그리고 주변의 그 서바이버들 모여서 어떤 룰을 다시 만들게 돼요. 왜냐하면 
이제 사람들이 모든 세상이 다 무너지고 리셋이 되었기 때문에 어, 우리가 다 같이 사는 어떤 어, 룰을 만들고 규칙을 만들고 이래서 어, 그런 극단적인 상황 속에서 새로운 법을 만들고 그런 이제 룰을 만들면서 어, 서로 다른 의견이 나오고 그러면서 인간성의 어떤 처음 빛바다까지 보게 되는 어, 그런 어떤 이야기들인데 결국 지금을 살아가는 우리들의 모습이 조금 극단적으로 표현하면 저런 모습이 아닐까라는 생각이 들었어요. So now they have to come the residents and the outside survivor come together to live together and they come to set about new rules on how to live together. And while I think the situation is extreme, it really shows how far people can go in such extreme. It's I think yes. And actually I'm going to ask a different question to Park Sejun so we have time for questions. Um, concrete Utopia marks your first time working together. How would you describe your experience? And is there a memorable moment you can share working with Lee Byung-hyun? Byung-hyun is the first time I worked with Lee Byung-hyun. 존경하는 선배님이셨거든요. 그래서 음, 이렇게 함께 작품할 날을 엄청 학수고대하면서 기다리면서 언젠간 있겠지라고 생각을 하고 지내왔었어요. As for Lee Byung Hun, ever since I dreamt of acting, I've always respected him, and I always looked forward and waited for my chance to work with him. 그래서 어, 이 콘크리트 유토피아를 참여하게 된 가장 큰 이유 중에 또 하나는 선배님과 함께 할수 있음이었거든요. 그래서 제가 어떤 팁이나 이런 거를 뭐 여쭤보기보다는 그냥 계속 선배님 어떻게 하시는지 모니터를 계속 본것 같아요. The biggest reason for me on coming on board with this project was actually him. But instead of asking him for tips, I think I was continuously monitoring him. So, 분명히 오늘은 되게 심각한 상황을 찍어야 하는 날인데 어, 대기하실 때는 또 굉장히 여유롭게 이렇게 있으시고 갑자기 촬영할 때는 저희 뭐 이제 한국에서 프로모션 할때막 그런 얘기 많이 했는데 정말 눈을 바꿔서 다시 갈아 낀 것처럼 다른 사람이 돼서 이렇게 연기하는 모습을 보면서 아참 그런 모든 순간들이 배울 점이었었던 것 같고요. So one day we were shooting a very serious scene and we were on, when we were on standby he was super relaxed but as soon as the shoot started it was as if he changed eyeballs with a different set of eyes and became someone else and that's something I feel like I could learn from him. 더불어서 선배님이 이렇게 연기하시는 걸 보면서 아 내가 연기하는 민성에서 뭔가 공감이 떨어지면 안 되겠다. 어 나도 잘해서 어 부족함이 없는 작품을 만들어야 되겠다라는 생각을 더 하게 되고 더 최선을 다 해야겠다라는 마인드를 갖게 된것 같아요. And while watching him, I felt more, a bigger need. That my character Min Sung should also be relatable, and I wanted to make a fulfilling uh, character. 그래서 어, 오늘 이 자리까지 함께 하는 게 저한테는 굉장히 뜻깊은 것 같습니다. That's why being here with him right now is also very meaningful. 사실 이 자리에서 처음 얘기하는 건데. 저는 눈 눈을 몇 가지 종류를 가지고 다녀요, 사실. This is my first time saying this, but I do have different sets of eyeballs that I carry around. <웃음> 아니, 저, 박서준 씨가 저 때문에 이 영화를 했다 그러니까 만약에 이 영화가 잘안 됐으면 정말 굉장히 큰 책임감을 느낄 뻔했어요. <웃음> Now, the, he mentioned how he worked on this film because of me. I felt a great responsibility. What if the film failed? <웃음>
Okay, so we do have uh, time for a few questions, uh, but we are, I'm going to start with a couple of questions that were already submitted to us via social media, and then we'll open up the questions here in the theaters. Uh, just a heads up that Park Sejun will not be able to answer any questions about the Marvels. I know you're all excited, <laughs> but you will have to wait for that. So this question is from Hannah for Lee Byung-hyun. A lot of your peers have ventured into directing and producing, like Lee Jong-jae, Jung Woo Sung, and Ha Jung Woo. You started your own management company, but do you have interests in other parts of the film production process, like directing? 일단 전 기본적으로 연기에만 집중하고 싶고요. 그리고 지금까지도 그래 왔고. 앞으로도 아마 그렇게 될것 같아요. 저는 회사가 있긴 하지만 어, 그 회사를 운영하는 것은 전적으로 대표한테 그냥 다 맡겨서 하고 있고 음, 그리고 제가 할수 있는 것은 연기밖에 없다고 여전히 생각을 하고 있어서 어, 어, 다른 곳에 눈 돌리거나 뭐 어, 능력이 됐으면 사실 좋겠어요. 사실 감독을 하고 프로듀서를 하는 동료 배우들을 보면 굉장히 에, 용감하다고 생각도 하고 또 되게 부러워요. 근데 음, 저는 그냥 연기만 음, 보여드릴 생각이에요. 현재는. I would like to focus on acting. I have always acted and I will continue to act. While I do have a company, the day-to-day -day management is done by other staff. Um, I wish I had the ability to direct, and when I see other actors who direct, I'm very, um, I think they're very brave, and there's a little tint of envy, but I think I would like to act. Thank you, and this question is from Stephanie for Park Sejun. Uh, if you actually survived a big natural disaster, what role do you think you would take on in a post-apocalyptic world? Would you be the leader who tries to fix everything? A follower? Would you keep to yourself? Or what area of expertise do you think you would bring? Honestly, I would say that in the beginning of the movie, in the end of the 어, 그냥 재난에 휩쓸려가는 사람이 됐을 것 같아. 이미 죽었을 것 같은데. To be honest, when the disaster first happens in the beginning, I feel like I would be swept by it and perhaps die. <웃음> 만약에 살아 있다면, <웃음> 어, 저는 다 같이 잘 살자 주의였을 것 같거든요. In the chance that I survived, I think I would try to live uh, well together. 어 그래서 음 저는 한 가지 믿는 게 있는데 이 한국이 정말 역사적으로 보면 여러 가지 일을 많이 겪었잖아요. 그래서 음또 되게 단합력이 높다고 생각해요. 한 대한민국의 국민들은 그래서 그런 상황이 왔을 때 분명히 다 같이 뭔가 더잘 살아갈 수 있지 않았을까 싶어서 저는 그런 인물 중에 한 명이지 않았을까 싶습니다. There's something I rely on actually is that um, Korea went through a lot in terms of history and we tend to unit um, come, come to unity very well and I think we could rely on that to form a community. So he will be the uh, union activist is the answer. <laughs> Uh, we're going to open it up. Uh, microphones are in the room. I will point to the person and please uh, speak into your microphone, so those online. Okay, I'm going to take the hand waving right in front of me. Yes. Uh, microphone, please. Um. Annyeonghaseyo. Hi. <laughs> Chonan Park Sojun Penyeo. I'm a huge fan. Hello, um, I'm a fan of Park Sojun. Thank you. Um, uh, 제 이름은 Lanal. Um, 어떻게 지내세요? 
My name is Renal. How are you? Good. Um, I'm going to ask my question in English. Um, I, uh, I think Anita already covered this a little bit, but I noticed that you haven't been in a lot of series lately. You seem to be leaning more towards films. Um, is that an intentional thing? And do you think you'll ever uh, go back to series or is it a direction that you want to be in film more? Oh, Imi. 2년 동안 TV 시리즈, 넷플릭스 시리즈를 촬영을 해서 음, 곧 나올 예정이고요. 음, 이제 촬영이 진짜 조금 남았는데 그거 끝나면 생각해 보려고 해요. 왜냐면 2년 동안 계속 촬영을 하다 보니까 뭔가 이제는 좀 쉬는 시간이 좀 필요할 것 같아서 아, 근데 또 오래 못 쉬는 성격이라서 Actually, for two years, I've been shooting uh, Netflix and TV series, and it will be released soon. Only just a tiny bit of left shooting is left. And I think I will think about what I want to do after that, but I do need a break. But I also, I'm the type who can't take a long break, so I will try to think about it after two months or so. I take a question. Yes, the person that's waving the sign. Yes. Uh, microphone. Hi, uh, I do have a question for uh, Lee Byung Hun Anim. And uh, I do apologize about the sign. Uh, I should be calling you Hyung and not Oppa, but I didn't make the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, you have been doing, obviously, a lot of different characters and successful characters, to say the least. Um, in your character when, within Concrete Utopia, what makes it so significant to you? And also, how do you choose your roles? First, when I choose the character, I want to see the character 어, 스토리를 봐요. 스토리가 얼마나 설득력이 있고 재미있느냐가 저한테 가장 중요한 어, 포인트고 어, 그 다음에 이제 저의 캐릭터를 들여다봐요. 어, 그렇기 때문에 이제 캐릭터도 매력적이었지만 사실 처음에 그 스토리에 벌써 그냥 어, 반해서 캐리, 어, 선택을 했고 어, 이 영화에 나오는 그 영탁이라는 인물도 사실 대놓고 when I decide on a project, I always look at the story first before I look at the characters. While the character of Young Tak is charismatic, I think I was more entranced by the story. Young Tak is a story that is a complete story. I want to make a story for my family. 어, 그런 극단적인 상황들로 인해 어쩔 수 없이 극단적인 어, 일을 벌리고 어, 그리고 권력으로 주어진 권력으로 인해 조금씩 조금씩 변해가는 그런 모습들 그런 모습들을 정말 잘 표현해야 되게 표현해야겠다라는 생각으로 어, 이 작품에 선택을 하게 된것 같아요. So Young Tak is a normal like father who is just trying to provide a home for his family. But he comes but he acts in extreme ways, faced with extreme situations. So as he comes through the power and authority. So I think I really try hard to portray that part. Thank you. Um, the person waving both arms in the middle back. Yes. Yes. Get a microphone for him. Hi, um, so I'm Jason. Um, thank you, Lee Byung Han and Park Soo Jin, for coming to Canada. I'm sure we all appreciate it and appreciate you very much. Um, this is a two part question. Uh, first one, first part of the question is uh, what are some of your favorite um, movies and music, uh, musical artists? And the second question is um, I am such a big fan that I would really faint if. 
this was given permission to happen. Um, is it possible after this is over for me, for it to be arranged for me to get a photo with uh, y you guys? So I don't know about the photo, but they can answer. Favorite movie and musician. <laughs> Hey, will you watch? Well, you want to think of a German or a German or 저의 정서를 가장 많이 가지고 있는 뭐 그런 영화인 것 같고. So there are too many films to name, but if I had to name one particular one, it would be Cinema Paradiso. I find it most influential as it was kind of very similar to my life story growing up. Mm. 가수도 사실 너무 많이 많은데 어, 사실 제가 내일 아, 며칠 후에 LA에 에, 갑자기 가게 됐어요. 그 이유는 어, 저의 친구 그 엑스제팬의 요시키가 어, 그, 그 차이니스 디어터 앞에 핸드 풋프린팅을 어, 하기로 결정이 돼서 음, 제가 그 이야기를 어, 그 친구로서 스피치를 해주기로 해서 가기로 했는데 음, 친구기 때문이기도 하지, 하지만 저의 학창 시절을 에 저의 어떤 제가 들, 그 음악을 들으면서 자랐기 때문에 에, 어, 너무나 좋아하는 음, 그런 에, 뮤지션입니다. Again, there are too many musicians to name, but um, it happens so that a um, few days later, I'll be traveling to LA to give a speech at um, ex-Japan Yoshiki's hand printing ceremony at the Chinese theater. Um, he's a good friend of mine, but he's also somebody that I, music I listened to growing up, so. Hey, I think we have just one final question we can do, so. Uh, yes, uh, with the arms straight up in the white jacket, right there. If we can have a mic to her. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sarah, and thank you so much for coming. Uh, uh, we're so excited to be here. Um, so my question is uh, for Park So Joon, and then maybe also Lee Byung Hun. Uh, so, uh, Lee Byung Hun, you've had a you know you've had a lot of movies that you've already done, uh, North American movies, Western movies, and uh, so you've had a lot of experience with that already. And for Park So Joon, it seems like your career is maybe just starting to head in that trajectory where you're starting to get into some more Western movies. And I was wondering, um, since you two have been working together, has Lee Byung Hun kind of given you any advice at this point in your career, um, or if not yet? Um, Lee Byung Hun, do you have any advice to give Park So Joon? <laughs> Thank you. 저희는 참고로 콘크리트 유토피아 얘기만 했습니다. We only talked about concrete utopia. <웃음> 음, 박서 씨 뿐만 아니라 이제 뭐 어, 새롭게 또. 처음으로 헐리우드를 경험하는 그런 후배들이 있으면 음, 기죽지 말라고 얘기해요. 저는 기죽었었거든요. 저는 기죽어서 어, 어, 많이 좀 이렇게 어, 자신 있게 뭔가를 하지 못했던 것 같은 그런 어떤 후회가 있어서 어, 박소준 씨도 그렇고 또 새로 헐리우드에서 영화를 시작하는 후배들을 보면 자신감 있게 하라고 그런 조언을 많이 해줘요. Not just to Park Seo Joon, but to any actors um, venturing into the Hollywood scene, I would say be confident. Because I wasn't confident when I first started in Hollywood, and I really regret that. So I always tell them to be confident. But I was 
<laughs> but actually, I was intimidated. <laughs> okay, well, this wraps up our session. Thank you, Lee Byon Hyun and Park Se Jun for spending the last 90 minutes with us. If you haven't seen Concrete Utopia, check it out on September 15th or 16th. And now we please ask you to stay in your seats for a couple of minutes to allow us to exit the theater. The front of house staff will let you know when you can start exiting, so please remain in your seats. Thank you so much and a big round of applause.